Hey, welcome back to New Zero Land. For the last few episodes, the other two Energicas in my garage watched in horror as I dismembered their companion, and the gas bike was probably loving it. But the bike has been in pieces, unplugged, for probably a month, so it's finally time to Frankenstein it all back together again. So to get this thing running outside of the bike, I need to take out the whole ignition thing, the barrel or whatever, with the key and all that stuff. Unfortunately, it's riveted in, so I need to drill out those rivets. Except drilling these out is impossible, especially with a puny drill bit like this. And uh, yeah, I don't know what I was trying to do here, but that didn't work either. And then I hit it with a mallet. Oh no, yeah, that's right. The only way to get to these rivets was to take the whole triple tree off. So that's what I did. One thing I'm super excited about is having a green key with a green car. <laughs> I don't know, it's the little things. When your part says no, the grinder says yes. This whole series is like how to steal an Energica, but the least efficient ways. Is the only way to get the ignition like key barrel thing off by grinding those down? I think so. I don't know how you guys do things in Europe. New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, probably. And then this is gonna sit somewhere in there uh, if I decide to even keep that location. I mean, I could put it somewhere else. I could put it like back in here or something, maybe, so that I don't have to yeah, if I put it here, then I don't really have to extend the wires, right? I could just go straight back to the rest of the bike and no one would know how to start my car because maybe I put it inside this thing, my CD tray that I'm not gonna be using. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I mean, everything is in a weird spot in this car, right? Like that's my horn. Somebody put a horn button on the dash instead of using the actual horn. Why? I don't know. This car is just as mysterious as the bike was. So really the last thing that's mounted to the frame is the braking stuff. So, I mean, obviously we have this thing that needs to be plugged in uh, for the whole starting procedure thing. I could just take that off. But the other thing is the ABS, right? This is the ABS sensor thing uh, that's mounted to the front of the bike. So how ABS works is, I have no idea. No idea at all. But since <laughs> since it was unplugged already, I'm assuming maybe I don't need it. I don't know. So I'm gonna try and like, once I get the whole thing plugged back in, I wanna see what I need and don't need. Maybe I could just go in the dash and see where it says ABS. If I can just turn that off. Um, maybe I could just do that forever. I don't know. These are the things I need to figure out. All right, just one thing I want to address before getting into the whole putting things back together video thing. Uh, the e-brake kickstand switch idea. Uh, some of you guys left this comment saying, hey, you should do that. It'd be pretty cool if you did that. And I thought, yeah, that's a great idea. I should do that. Um, but then some of your other people commented saying, yeah, what about handbrake turns? So I'm not doing it because handbrake turns. Thanks, guys keeping me prioritizing. All right, back to the video. Okay, so separated everything and organized it kind of. Uh, I mean, that's like the big harness that connects to everything. And so that's still, it looks like a mess, but whatever, that can stay spaghetti. This whole area is charging, kind of like how I laid it out on the bike where, you know, like that's the AC charger, that's the charging port, there's the fan over there, and then all these wires are related to charging. This stuff goes on the handlebars. There's like the ignition, the mode switches and stuff like that, the indicators, the throttle, the, the on switch um, safety thing, uh, controller, radiator, all this is just one whole contained unit. Really, it looks really simple. And now it's just a matter of reinstalling it in reverse to how I took it apart. I still haven't extended the high voltage cables, so the controller has to go back on top of the battery where it was, just for now. I'm gonna have to sort out an external DC-DC converter and also a master kill switch. And I'm not sure how long to make the cables just yet. So that's a job for another time. I'll just add those to the list. And uh, yeah, I can barely walk in my garage now since we keep buying more bikes, but you know we're not gonna stop buying more bikes. Cleaning the garage is also on the list. These really short high voltage cables also meant I needed to move the motor back to where it was. It was really the only way to get it plugged back in. 
but at least I could get an idea of how it'll look in the car. This is just about how I arranged it in 3D land, and so this is what it looks like in real life. I mean, that's how the battery's gonna be, that's how the motor's gonna be. Like, here's the front sprocket, and the chain's just gonna go back like this. They'll be a little bit closer, the motor's gonna be lower, uh, and the only difference here is that the controller is gonna be mounted here on the side, so I'll have to find some mounting points for a bracket to make like a little plate that, you know, sits probably an inch out from the battery. Some people said, leave it on top, Back to the Future's cool, or, you know, put it above the motor or something, but I want to keep all the weight low for handling, just, you know, it's just how it is, put everything low. Somebody asked about the charger, like, do I even need the AC charger in the car? especially since there's DC charging for whenever I'm out and about, it would save a lot of weight to just leave it at home in my garage. And that's a cool idea. It's kind of like how they set up the Moto E bikes. But is that a thing I can do? I'm not sure yet. Once I get everything running, I want to start unplugging things and see if it still works or if the bike gets unhappy. I'm okay if the bike gets a little unhappy, but if it's too unhappy that it doesn't want to run, then that's a problem. Okay, time to find out if my labeling system actually works. I'm going to start with the last thing I unplugged, which was the ignition. Where's that? Over there. There you go. This one. Right? Is that right? That looks right. What does it say? Key. That's what I wrote on that. Anyway, that's the idea. So I'm going to drink some Red Bull and do this really fast. I was so excited to match up the labels and plug stuff back in that I didn't realize that the whole harness needed to be on top of the battery first. Like, I can't plug in the heavy charger and then haul everything over afterwards. These two plugs have to go into the battery, and there's also two big ones that go into the controller. And those are such a big part of the harness that really I need to plug those in first and then see where everything else is at. I don't know who's actually going to do this, like take apart a wrecked Energica and plug stuff back in with the intent of putting it into a car in a totally different orientation. Maybe somebody, maybe I'm recording a message for myself in the future when I inevitably unplug this again and I'm telling my future self, hey, you should get the harness close to the battery first, you dingus. But I definitely want to make all of this look cleaner in the end. Right now the spaghetti is more of a mess than ever. I finally realized why electrical videos look so confusing because usually people are just trying to make it work and they're just plugging stuff in and they're not really thinking about how to route things in a visually pleasing way. And this is this is not what Energica planned. This is not what I had in mind in the future. Like I'm, I'm gonna go through all this and make it look a lot better, I promise. Um, but for now, I just wanna make it work. So I apologize. <laughs> now, I guess I should turn the key, I guess. <laughs> that's uh, it's kind of freaky. So yeah, let's try it. Ooh, water pump worked. Vehicle tip over. Um, yeah, I guess I tipped it over. It's my, my mode button. So let's go um, mode to skip. I went to the error page and it's like, hey, your headlights aren't plugged in, and hey, your uh, let's see what the next is. ABS system is not plugged in. And I think the taillights and running lights, like it, it cycles through all these. Um, let's see if, yeah, these. Blink, blink, blink. How cool is that? Like, it's such a cool thing. So, I mean, I know none of that stuff's plugged in, which is pretty cool. And it's cool that the bike knows that too, but uh, will it run without ABS is what I'm curious about. Oh, actually, I totally forgot that the uh, brake lever thing is still over here. I need to plug these in to those wires that are still in the harness. So I just want to show how this switch works, the brake lever switch. So there are two wires that go into this little thing. So when you pull in the brake lever, it releases this part. This little part goes out and that triggers the switch. So I thought about draining the brake fluid so I could unbolt this and move the lever over to where the wires are, way up in here, these guys. Um, but I just thought, like, well, I could just plug in a normal switch with two prongs and switch between, like, pretend this is the lever out and then this is the lever in. And so I could just hold that, start the bike, and then turn it off. Just for, you know, just to have it over here and not, like, take this whole thing apart because it's, it's just a mess. In the car, under the brake pedal, there's one of these switches. It's like a squishy, squishy switch. 
the official term for that, but this is only one prong or whatever you call it. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna use the other one just for now. Okay, let's see if that works. On. Where's my start switch? This guy. Let's see, I don't know uh, how the switch is oriented right now, so let's just try this. Nope, pull the brake in. All right, let's try the other one then. Nope, uh, vehicle tip over still, okay. That's gonna get annoying. The problem was the VCU is upside down. I guess it has some kind of sensor inside that just knows that it's upside down, so. Okay, let's try this again. So, turn the key on. You go. Okay, no tip over error. Just a bunch of other errors. So, let's see if my brake lever switch worked. So, if I... Oh, oh, it's working. It's working. Let me, let me put this on a tripod. It's in eco mode, so it's not really gonna go that fast, but just wanna see if it works. It does, it does, it works. Also, something I just realized is that the speed sensor is in the motor, not in the wheel, like using the ABS sensor. So if I twist this, it measures the speed, which is kind of cool. So I'm guessing that it just knows what the, the ratio is between the sprockets and it just like measures it that way. So it knows exactly what speed it's going. Yeah, kind of cool. That'll actually make it really easy in the car because I can just adjust the speed uh, to whatever sprocket I use next. And I don't actually need a speed sensor on the wheel. It'll just be in the motor. It's perfect. All right, well, that's exciting. That's, I mean, this is the end of the episode. So uh, I'm really excited that it's working and it's all plugged back in and I can charge it again. Just, you know, maintain the battery for as many years as it takes to put this in the car. Uh, now that it's running, uh, without the brakes, I'm really excited because ABS isn't plugged in, but I'm curious how fast it'll go. We'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that later. Put it in sport mode and see what happens. <laughs> Just <laughs> watch the thing flip over and go through the wall. But yeah, next up, um, I don't know when the next episode is gonna be, probably next year or something. Just because like, there's so much stuff to do. I have to figure out the diff and the sprocket and get all that working. Uh, make a housing for the diff. I have to get an electric vacuum pump for the brakes uh, to replace the engine powered vacuum pump. Um, I have to put the car on a diet, just like basically strip out the interior, take everything out, take the AC out. Uh, I don't need air conditioning or heater stuff because it's convertible. So that's a whole nother, uh, you know, that, that'll be fun actually taking everything out of the car. So I don't know. I don't know what the next episode is going to be or when it's going to be, but thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.